Hi folks, Astronomy Live. Back on the evening of December 25th, we watched the James Webb Space Telescope traveling away from Earth and towards Lagrange Point 2. When I took those images and put them into a time lapse of the six hours of footage we recorded, you can see that the Space Telescope appears to curve one way and then it appears to reverse direction and curve the other way relative to the background stars. And this seems to be quite counterintuitive. Most people seem to expect that it should appear to move in a straight line, but that is definitely not the case. So let's take a look at why this is. First, a quick refresher that in the previous video, I solved for the orbit of the James Webb Space Telescope using nothing but my own observations, and I found that it was last closest to Earth at about the time of the launch, and that it had a distance from Earth at that time of just a few hundred kilometers above the surface, as we would expect. We can now use this orbital data to calculate the predicted coordinates of the James Webb Space Telescope as seen from various locations. For example, here are the coordinates it predicts for the period of the webcast as seen from my home, which of course is also where I observed the telescope from. It's a bit circular, of course, because I already observed it from this location at that time, and in fact, that's how this orbit was calculated. But just for the sake of sanity checking, let's double check these coordinates and feed them back over the image that we recorded during the webcast and verify that this orbit is lining up with the observations that we made. First up, here is a mosaic of three segments of time-lapse that were stacked together. You can see the curve that the James Webb Space Telescope took over the course of the webcast. You can also see the flare and brightness it exhibited in the very first frame at the bottom right side of the curve. The current consensus on what caused that flare seems to be that the telescope is probably changing its attitude following the completion of its first mid-course correction burn, and that during this rotation, some part of the telescope caught the sun and dramatically increased its brightness for a brief period of time. This was definitely a real phenomenon. I was not the only observer who caught this. There's also footage from an EV scope that shows the exact same flare occurring at the exact same time. If we astrometrically solve this photo, we can overlay the coordinates from my orbit solution back on top of it. And what we find is a perfect agreement. We can see that the curve should be there, and we can also look at the length of each segment. They're equally spaced in time, and based on that, we can see that towards the end of the time lapse, at the top left of the curve, the spacing gets wider, indicating that the James Webb Space Telescope should be appearing to accelerate during the end of the time lapse, which is what we see. Again, this is a bit counterintuitive, because we know that the Space Telescope is getting further from Earth, and we know that Earth's gravity is causing it to decelerate over time, so we would intuitively expect to see that the angular rate of the telescope is also decreasing over time, but this is actually the opposite of what we see during the six hour time lapse. So let's try to visualize what's going on here and understand why this is happening. Here's a simulation of where the James Webb should be seen in the sky as seen from San Francisco. This simulation was created by Tony Dunn, who runs OrbitSimulator.com, and over the course of multiple days, you can see that it appears to wiggle back and forth. Now let's take a look in the opposite direction. This simulation was also run by Tony Dunn, and it's viewed from the perspective of the James Webb looking back at Earth during the six hours of the webcast. You can see Earth moving against the background stars and rotating over the six hours that we watched it. Even from this perspective, it may not be immediately obvious to you why the curve is occurring and why it appears to switch directions in the middle of the six hour webcast. Now let's stabilize this footage on the stars and take another look. You can see how Earth is moving relative to the background stars even as it's rotating. And what we were observing is how the telescope is moving relative to the background stars from the perspective of an observer at a stationary point on that rotating surface. Now it's probably still not entirely intuitive why the curve is occurring and why it appears to be reversing directions, but we should see the mirror image of that same curve occur for a fixed point on the surface of Earth close to where the observer was, in this case, my telescope in Florida. So if we take a fixed point in Florida and look at how it moves relative to the fixed background stars as seen from the James Webb, we should see the mirror image of what we saw with my telescope watching the James Webb. In this animation, I've taken Celestia and loaded into it the orbital elements that I calculated for the James Webb. I then overlaid a mirrored image of the stacked image I showed earlier, 
and you can see that if we place the start of that curve at a point in Florida, that same point will appear to move along that curve throughout the course of this animation, which covers the exact same time period as the webcast, and it comes to a stop at the end of that same curve. What this animation is showing us is that the curving motion we saw of the James Webb is actually being caused by Earth's rotation. As the telescope is rising, it's curving in one direction, and after it passes the meridian, the highest point it reaches in the sky, it starts to curve the other direction. And once again, if we simply mirror this curve and overlay it back onto a view of Earth as seen from the James Webb, we see the exact same motion taking place. It may be counterintuitive when watching the Webb move from a telescope on Earth, but once you consider topocentric parallax, the parallax caused by my position on Earth and how that position is rotating, it actually makes perfect sense. And if we consider an observer position at a geocentric position at the center of the Earth and without accounting for the rotation of the Earth, we do get a prediction of a straight line motion. Let's take a look at how that looks relative to what we actually saw. Here are the predicted coordinates of the web as seen from a geocentric perspective over the course of the webcast. The straight green line above my image shows the prediction for a geocentric observer and you can see that it's completely outside the field of view of my images. Again, this is because of the topocentric parallax and the difference between my position in Florida and a position at the center of the Earth. You get a different position for where you would be observing the web, but you also get a difference in the shape of the path taken by the web. It makes a lot more intuitive sense now. You can see that from a geocentric perspective, you would get a straight line and the segment length would be gradually decreasing over time. I hope this clears up this mystery. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching and clear skies.